Hello, in this tutorial we will cover common mistakes when probing single-ended oscillators and explain how to identify and avoid potential probing issues. Let's consider the example when we need to check a single-ended oscillator waveform and for this we have an oscilloscope with a passive probe. As an oscillator we will use SAT8208 with LVCMOS output driver 10 MHz carrier frequency, 3.3 volt output swing, and 1.2 nanosecond rise full time. For waveform capture, we will use Tektronics and DPO7104 with passive probe series P2220 switched to 1x mode. Let's capture a waveform. Looking at the waveform, we are observing that it doesn't reach its full swing. Instead of 3.3 volt amplitude, we have only 2.5 volt and rise fall time is much slower than it is specified in the datasheet. So the first thing that comes to mind is that oscillator probably is damaged. But let's think what could cause that waveform does not look as we expected. There are two reasons that cause this issue. First is a probe mode. Let's have a look at the probe datasheet. As we can see, in 1x mode which we currently use, the probe has input capacitance from 80 to 110 picofarad which is too much load for oscillator. Typical load for LVCMOS oscillator is 15 picofarad. With such a huge load, we can expect oscillator's rise and fall time to be too long to reach full swing of the signal. And the second important parameter is bandwidth, which in 1x mode is limited to 6 MHz, what is the second issue that causes distortion of our waveform. Looking at column for 10x mode, we can see that input capacitance is much lower, around 1317 picofarad, which is close to the load at which the oscillator was characterized, and bandwidth is higher, up to 200 MHz. Let's switch the probe to 10x and configure the oscilloscope for this mode. So here we see that the attenuation factor is selected for 10x. Let's capture waveform again. As we can see now, the waveform looks better. However, we are observing ringing over and under shoots. This is caused by the ground loop that we are using here. The ground loop is treated as an inductance together with the probe input capacitance that forms a resonance loop, which in turn causes excessive ringing after fast rising or falling edges. So let's disconnect the ground loop and use the spring accessory to minimize the ground pass. As we can see now, no ringing and over or under shoots. Amplitude is around 3.3 volt and rise fall time is closer to the oscillator spec. But why we didn't get the rise fall time numbers and in the spec, though the load is around 50 picofarad? The reason for that is probe bandwidth. Even in 10x mode, probe has limited bandwidth to 200 MHz, which is not enough for such fast rise or fall time. Another issue that the engineers can face is when attempting to capture a rather large time frame of the signal, causing the oscilloscope to automatically reduce the sampling rate due to limited memory. Let's try to reduce the sample rate and check what result we can get. As we can see, the waveform of high frequency signal now looks like for a low frequency signal. This phenomenon occurs due to aliasing, which is caused by undersampling. To avoid such situation, you need to remember that the sample rate has to be at least two times higher than the highest frequency in measured signal spectrum. So what is required for correct waveform measurement? First, oscilloscope with high bandwidth and high sample rate. Refer to the equation shown for selection criteria. The second is an active probe with high bandwidth and low input capacitance. Probe bandwidth settings can be evaluated with the same equation as for the scope bandwidth. Let's consider another example when we need probe oscillator during the high or low temperature test. It might be convenient to connect a probe using extension wires. However, such approach has several drawbacks, including noise pickup from the neighboring circuits and large self-inductance of the loop, which leads to reduced bandwidth ringing over or under shoots. So let's set up the tenth bench and check what result we will get. On the setup, we have the same UVB 
and long wires connected to the passive probe. As the result of that approach is a waveform with significant reflections. Those reflections are caused by non-terminated long wires connected to a 10 mega ohm passive probe. In this case, long traces or wires longer than one sixth of the effective rising edge lens are treated as transmission line with distributed parameters, and it requires impedance matching. Describing a process from the signal perspective, we can say that signal traveling through the line reflects from the high input impedance of the probe, and since there is no proper source termination, the reflected wave reaches the source and reflects back. To minimize the wireless self-inductance, twisted pair can be used for that. Let's capture the waveform with using this handmade twisted pair. As can be seen, there are a lot of reflections. Those are caused by the mismatching between line, oscillator, and probe impedances. To reduce those reflections, we can use serial 20 ohm resistor at the oscillator side and 50 ohm resistor between signal and ground at the lower side. Although this allows us to reduce reflections, it doesn't allow to eliminate them at all. The reason for this is an open line impedance that in addition may vary along the line. One more example of probing waveform, now with active 1.5 GHz probe. Here we have UVB with connected 4 feet coaxial cable that was used with another equipment, but now it is disconnected from the instrument, so one end of the cable is floating. As we can see from the waveform, even with active probe, we are observing reflections. This is basically is caused by the non-terminated 50 ohm coaxial cable. Let's disconnect the coaxial cable and recapture the waveform. As we can see, the waveform measurement now is correct. No waveform distortions and rise fall time is equal to the spec number. Summarizing our experiments, we can conclude that passive probes are not suitable for high-speed clock signals measurements limiting its usage to debugging low-speed digital circuits, low-bandwidth analog circuits, low-speed high-impedance sources, probing DC sources. For high-speed signals probing, we recommend high-bandwidth, low-capacitance, and high-impedance active probes. Please subscribe to our YouTube page. You can learn more about our industry-leading technology or contact us at www.sitime.com. Thanks for watching.